now I want to go into finding the debt tool. How do I acquire what I need to eventually implement this complex concept, which is simple in execution, right? How do I go about doing that? Now, again, if you click the very first link in all of my videos to join my email newsletter, you will get sent a playlist that goes over, eventually you'll, you'll get the email. It'll specifically go over the who, what, when, where, why, and how to find a debt tool. That's free information. Some people charge thousands of dollars to get access to that information. Then Zell is doing it for the free. The issue is you have to take the time. That's the issue. You have to spend the time to watch the material. So some people will do it. Some people won't. Some people will procrastinate. And that's why you'll stay in your measly 2000 a month, 3000 or 5 grand a month income and you'll never reach higher potentials. And by the way, this is not a lot of money. 20 grand a month, 35 grand, that's not a lot of money. That's, a, that's enough money for one family, but it's not enough money for 25 families, 25 households. See, I think more than just my own household, I am thinking about the kingdom. A kingdom is comprised of multiple households uniting together for a higher purpose, a higher vision, a higher value, a stronger brand mission statement. I can't stay small. I can't think small. I can't think, I can't think small to wealth. It's impossible. You're going to be disappointed in the end when you're 59 and a half and you can only take four vacations a year or two or one and they can only be on the holidays or the kids' birthdays. You can't just take a vacation just because it's a Tuesday, right? You don't wanna have that frustration. So in regards to finding the debt tool, the first thing that I do is a Google search in my area. That's the first thing. Google search in my area, 25 mile radius, okay? I'm going to search Local credit unions. That's what I'm going to search. Local credit unions. I can then type in state credit union. I can type in federal credit union. I can type in nationwide credit union and go on a hunt in my local area. I start there first. I then will make a list of all the banks that I find. Again, this is free information. The problem is you got to go do the work. That's the problem. That's the variable. Will you do it? I don't know. That's not my problem. I've already done it for me, for my clients, right? In my course, it's already there for the most part. You know, I try to go state by state and I try to give you the tools, but listen, like they, that good old saying, bring the horse to the water. You can't force them to, to drink, right? So with that being said, I type these things in, Google will pop up results, 25 mile radius. I start writing down the list of banks, okay? Once I got my list, now it's a matter of process of elimination, okay? What you are going to do is visit the website. of each and every bank that is a credit union, okay? You're gonna visit their website. You're gonna click on the tab that says loans. 
right? Or um, it might say borrow, okay? Anything that says borrow, loans, personal loans, right? You're going to click on that because you're looking to see if they offer these tools right here. An all-in-one loan is an exclusive product. You're not going to find that everywhere. You have to go through a proper source first. The only source that I know of so far is called cmgfinancial.com. That's the only source that I know so far. There's probably more, but that's the only one that I know so far. So you're not going to see that promoted anywhere from all the banks that I've looked at so far. So that's why you're going to see just this. And even these are not as easy. That, you know, the credit card is the easiest one that you'll obviously see. Okay. So with the credit cards, pretty straightforward. You're looking for 0% on purchases with cashback rewards or maybe points. That's what you want. When it comes to a personal line of credit, secure personal line of credit, HELOC in the first or second position, you are looking for the proper terminology. You want to make sure it says line of credit. Okay. These are the most important words right here of, of these two products. Line of credit right line of credit very very important you don't want to get confused with a loan from a line you don't want to apply for a loan because you cannot do velocity banking with a loan it won't work you need a line you need a revolving it's another key word revolving line of credit it needs to be revolving okay very important. So as you visit the website, you click on loan, borrow, and all you're going to do is if you cannot find line of credit revolving, you cannot find these tools, right? You want to start separating the list. Banks that offer it, banks that don't. Banks that offer it, banks that don't. Create your list. You start process of elimination. What you could do is if you don't see line of credit revolving, you can stop and just find the number and call. Call the bank and ask, do you currently offer a personal line of credit, secured or unsecured, a home equity line of credit in the first or second position as of 2021? Are you currently offering that product? Yes or no? You get a no, cross them off the list, keep searching. You get a yes, okay, put them on the, put a star next to that bank and you say, all right, I'm gonna come back to you. And you go through all the banks. Once you know which banks are actually offering what we want, then we're gonna do the next steps. But until then, all you needed to find out is if they even offer it. Because if they don't offer it and then you start asking, hey, what does it take to get a proof of this and what credit score do I need and blah, 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 you're wasting your time. You're wasting your time asking about what the requirements are, trying to build a relationship. You're wasting your time. You need to find out if they offer the stuff in the first place. Okay? So, call the bank. Make your list. Separate the list. You want to do, say, three to five banks. Three to five banks before you uh, stop your research. Right? You want to have a, a, a good amount of options, okay? Hope you're taking notes because I'm going to be erasing, but you can also rewind, right? And go back and come back to it. So, three to five banks, right? Once you have the known banks that offer what we want, now it's a matter of competition. So you're going to start asking what the rates are. Some banks display their rates, some do not. Some display them, but you have to like click a bunch of buttons to get to it. And there is a tab called rates in many of the banks and it'll show all of the products that they offer from borrowing and lending. 
and um, you'll see the different rates. So you want to ask what the rates are. Okay, very important. Now it's a matter of finding the best debt tool amongst these three to five banks that you uh, discovered. Okay. You find the rate that you're, that is the lowest one out of the three to five banks, right? So you can el immediately, immediately eliminate everyone once you find the lowest rate according to the debt tool that you're looking to apply for. If you don't have a home or if you don't have enough equity in your home, cross out HELOC. No need to even waste your time on that. Look here, personal line of credit, secure line of credit, and credit cards, right? Or what you can do is think long term and you can find a bank that does have both so you can stay with one bank and continue to build that long term relationship. Okay. At the end of the day, when it comes to rates, I don't think you can really go wrong, like, like terrible. For the most part, a lot of the credit unions are similar in rates. I will say this as of 2021. If you're applying for a PLOC, anything below 10% is a good product in my opinion. If you find 7% or lower, that is phenomenal. That is a great rate. 7% or lower. 10% or lower? Okay, cool. If it is between 10 and 13%, you're pushing it. You may want to scale back, maybe do debt snowball before you apply for that. Okay. Anything that's 15%, honestly, if it's 13% or higher, you don't want it. Too high. Too high. You're not going to be able to do much damage with that. Right? Not worth it. Not worth getting an inquiry on your report for 15%. Okay. So that's for PLOC. Anything below 10% is pretty good. You get below seven, I'm like, damn, what's the name of that bank? So I can put it in my course and, and uh, you know, share that with my clients because that's pretty cool. HELOC. Honestly, anything below 4% right now is awesome. If you get 3%, you're freaking cool. If you get below two, you're amazing. I mean, if you get below three, you're amazing. Between three and two, you're, kill you're killing it. You're killing it. You can't tell me you're, you're not going to go faster than velocity banking at 2% or 3%, right? You're, you're going to be doing big moves. So those are the rates that you're kind of ideally looking for, right? And that's a good thing to know. So you know your, you know your range. You look at the rates. Now... Once you found the bank, you called them, you asked them, found out which one's got the lowest rate. Now you ask about the requirements. What are the requirements when you're on the phone calling the lend calling the bank, right? The manager, hey, can can somebody talk to me about the home equity line of credit, the personal line of credit, first or second position? I want to know all the requirements needed. To get approved for this specific tool right so typical requirements credit score they want to see a certain credit score every bank is different this is why I'm not giving you certain numbers because every bank is different and they're always changing their rules up so credit score is important are you a member so this is, these two are like right together, establishing a relationship. What does that mean? Becoming a member at the bank. You have to open up a checking, possibly a savings, okay? So before you apply, once you've gotten all your information, all the requirements needed, right? And you feel comfortable and you're like, okay, this is the bank I want to go with. This is the best rate that, from the research that I found. You then become a member at the bank. You open up a checking and a savings, and I would redirect all of your income to that bank for a period of time to establish a relationship. You dump your savings into that bank. You move your paychecks into that bank. You set up bill pay. 
I would give this a three to six month window before you even apply for the tool at, at most, three to six months at most, okay? They're gonna ask, you're gonna need to know what credit score is required, right? Now here are some, uh, in terms of the tool, the product itself, once you find a good rate, you know the credit score, you start, you know, before you become a member, you also want to ask about the functionality of it, right? So I didn't mention that in over here, but really how does the tool function? You want to make sure that what you're reading matches from what you apply to. For example, it needs to be revolving, okay? You want something that is open-ended for at least five years or more. Because typically, doing velocity banking, we can get out of debt within probably five to seven years or less doing velocity banking. The revolving part separates a loan from a line. Okay, that's the most important part. Open-ended means the term. How long will it be revolving for? You want five years or more. Typically with PLOCs, I'll see as low as three years or five years, which is fine. You can always just renew, okay? So you always wanna make sure you renew. And when you renew, you wanna make sure your balance is at zero, okay? So if your HELOC is gonna expire, you're in the fifth year and you wanna renew it, make sure it's at zero and then ask to renew before the, the date even expires and they'll maybe prolong the period, okay? So open-ended for five years or more. Now, another very important thing is restrictions. Are there any restrictions in regards to the tool itself. For example, in Texas, it's very common with HELOCs that you are only allowed to withdraw $4,000 at a time. So you have to withdraw $4,000 every time you uh, wanna pull money out of the HELOC. That's not the most ideal situation. There's a way around it, of course, and I've got a strategy to that. But me personally, I don't want a limit as to how much money I can pull out of my debt tool, right? I want the limit to be at least like 50 to 100 bucks. I don't think you can get around that. I don't, I've never met one where you can just take out a dollar. I've never, never seen that. We're not really taking out a dollar, but we're also not really typically taking out 4,000 at once. Now, why is that? because we wanna keep our money in the tool for as long as humanly possible, okay? To, again, reduce the interest cost of borrowing. We're trying to offset that big time. So usually those transaction limits are 50 to $100, like minimum that you have to withdraw when, you go to, when we go to do velocity banking and use it. But I don't want a high restriction of 4,000. That can be quite annoying, tough, don't like it. So revolving open-ended, five years or more. Typically with PLOCs, they're as low as three, maybe five years. Some PLOCs are just open-ended, okay? The next thing you can ask uh, is with the HELOC and PLOC is if it comes with a card. This is really cool. If it comes with a card, like literally you'll have, like a it'll be like a checking account routing number and all, where you can directly deposit from your income, your, your job can direct deposit to your debt tool. These are some of my most favorite debt tools because now it automates the process of me putting money in, taking money out, putting money in, taking money out, putting money in, taking money out. If I'm able to send my income directly to the tool, that saves me time. And if I'm able to pay my bills directly out of the tool, that saves me even more time because I can just set up auto pay. 
That's cool. Those are my favorite ones. Now, for the most part, for all the other tools that do not come with a card, that's okay too. Not the end of the world. Right? Not the end of the world. All you have to do is link your checking to the debt tool. Right? You link your checking account to the debt tool. Denzel, what does it mean? Whoa, whoa, whoa. What does it mean to link, link, link? It's just a word. Don't get crazy on me. Okay? All it is, is you want to make sure your income is going to that same bank. Right? That checking account that you set up is at the same bank that you have your debt tool. So when you log into your mobile banking account or on the desktop, you're going to see your line of credit. You're going to see your checking account. When you have your checking account, you can do what's called a transfer, right? You can transfer money. Very simple. Not hard work. You transfer your entire check to the debt tool, and then you do a fantastic thing called a withdrawal. Transfers and withdrawals. Money going in, money coming out. Money going in, money coming out. These are for the people that do not get the card with the account and routing number. This is your alternative, right? It's a little extra work, a little more steps, nothing crazy. Pretty straightforward, okay? So when you're looking at the restrictions, you want to make sure, you want to ask about these things. That'll help you, okay? Let's see. The, uh, I want to make sure I'm not missing anything. Now, a, a big one is the actual application process that people get scared on. Once you've done all the work, all the pregame work, you go to apply. I need you to read the agreement. Very important. Read the agreement before you accept. It's very important. Read it thoroughly. Okay? Because sometimes with HELOCs, another restriction is they say you have to pull out 25 grand upon opening the account. I don't want to pull out 25 grand if, I don't, if I'm only making 500 bucks in cash flow a month. I don't want to be restricted to that. So I don't want to have that restriction. Sometimes they'll say that. You have to pull out a certain amount of money. Or they'll say uh, you have to pay off this bill, that bill, that bill. That may not be the best bills to pay off, right? So we don't want those restri restrictions. Read the agreement before you accept. They may tell you something over the phone, but then on contract, the game changed. So you want to make sure. In addition to that, some banks will say, okay, you have to pull out 25 grand and then, you have to, and then we're, we're going to pay off this, this, and this for you. And you have to keep the 25K owed for three months so you can't pay us back you can only pay the the regular payment if you pay it back in full you'll be penalized or something like that I, i've seen things like that before that's not what we want so say for example this option was the lowest rate option but it had these restrictions i would say no and go to the other bank so that's why you do all of this stuff before you apply, before you, you know, move all your banking and all that stuff. You get very educated so you don't get stuck in the mix. All right? Very, very important. So when you're applying, right? I can't believe I erased it. Read before you sign. Then they're going to ask you why. Very important question. Why do you need this? Or they'll say, what do you need the line of credit for? Okay. Me personally, I have always stuck to the word cash flow. 
I'm using this line of credit to increase my cash flow, reduce expenses, consolidate debt. Don't say velocity banking. You're going to give them, they're going to look at you with three heads. You'll be like, what? Don't say that. Say, say the traditional terms. You have to speak their language. So you say, I'm looking to consolidate debt, which is going to reduce my expenses, which is going to increase my cash flow. Say, lower my interest rate. So I'm looking to increase cash flow by consolidating debt that I have, which is going to lower my overall interest rate, which is going to reduce my expenses, which is going to increase my credit score. Increase credit score, build credit score. These are all green flags. If you say it like this, why do you need the line of credit? I am looking to consolidate debt that I have, which is going to give me a lower rate. The HELOC has a rate of 3%. I looked online. All of my debts right now are at a higher rate, so I'm going to lower my rates on my debts by consolidating, which is going to increase my cash flow. It's going to reduce a lot of my expenses as well. And this can really help me increase my credit score and really build my credit score for the long term. You tell that to a loan officer, they're going to be like, well, damn. And if you build a relationship with the loan, the loan officer, he or she, right, and you connect with them, make a joke. Ask them how their day is going. Ask them how, how, how are, how's life, right? Be, be conversational with them. They will want to help you, right? Because once you make the application, it goes into underwriting, right? And when you underwrite something, right, there's a person. There's still a person. So before it hit the computers and stuff, there's still a person that's going to review that. So when you apply for something, sometimes with credit unions, there's a section in your application. Sometimes they have something called notes. And in the notes, you can have your loan officer put all of this great information in the notes. The underwriter is going to see that. Maybe the loan officer will talk to the underwriter and say, listen, we have a long-term client here. We want to take care of them. They plan on moving their business accounts. They plan on moving money to us. This is the part about thinking long-term. Very effective things. That's one of the most important questions. Why do you need this? Sometimes that can make or break your application when you say something not so smart. Like, oh, I'm going to use this to do velocity banking and I'm going to 10x my income and I'm going to start a business and I'm going to invest. These are red flags. They're going to be like, whoa, 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 whoa. What is velocity banking and what is 10x and, and, uh, and, and you're going to invest using debts? Um, no, <laughs> we don't want that. That's a red flag, ladies and gentlemen. So you have to speak their lingo, speak their language, talk traditionally. So you have to be able to, you have, you have to know when to turn the switch off, <laughs> turn it on, right? Where we, we, what we're doing here is a culture that we're creating, a way of thinking, an untraditional foreign way of thinking. These are how, this is how the banks think, but they don't want their customers to think this way because they'll establish their own banks. And then they move their money out of their bank into the bank of Rodriguez, the bank of Stella, the bank of Johnny, the bank of Selvin. They don't want that. So you have to be aware and be able to speak their language, get what you need, and go. Have a nice day. So that is everything that I know in regards to obtaining a debt tool, the main things that you need to know. If you get on my email newsletter, you'll eventually get an email from me that talks about, you know, velocity banking pregame work, how to find the who, what, when, where, and why of lines of credits, and how to get approved, and, and all that good stuff.